All right, what's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR here. So this video is going to be my impressions for Ghost of Tsushima after playing it for about 13 or 14 hours. So it's kind of difficult to make this impressions video because there's honestly so much to say and it's hard to collect my thoughts because this game has a lot more depth and a lot more layers than I think most of us thought it would have, right? So it's kind of like hard to give like a comprehensive um, you know, impressions video. But first thing I want to touch on is the story, which won't be much that I say about it because mind you, even though I played the game for about uh, 13 or 14 hours, I've only done about four, uh, about two main missions, I think, maybe three, but I'm sure I've done two main missions, even though I played like 13 hours. And that seems to be uh, the consensus, according to my post on Twitter, is mo is a lot of people, most people have just gotten lost in the world, have gotten lost in the island of Tsushima, where they're spending most of the time doing everything else besides the main mission. So, but to touch on the story, what I've played, and it's, it's pretty much what we understood of this game uh, prior to even playing it. So the main character is Jin Sakai of the Sakai clan, a prestigious clan. Uh, of Tsushima Island uh, you know he was raised uh, by the samurai code you know and the samurai code is very important to their lives they live and they die by it they have this honor system and this respect uh, to all people even in death and in, and in combat so that's something that they hold very sacred uh, but the Mongols are invading Tsushima and they don't really care about no honor system they're like, listen, bro, uh, if you want to live and die by your honor system, that's on you. We don't really give a damn about that, right? If you die, you die. We don't care how we kill you. We gonna kill you one way or another. So now, Jin, who has pretty much lived by this honor system, and it's like everything to samurai, kind of has to break that now because the Mongols have studied the samurai. They know all the samurai moves. So yeah, that's not going to work anymore. So he has to break the code that's been most important to him and what's been taught to him his entire life. And if you break this code, you might as well commit seppuku. I believe that's that's what they what 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 it's called. I believe believe I pronounce pronounce it right, which is suicide by blade, right? So now he's got to break that as I said. And that's pretty much the premise. Now he has to explore the ways of combat uh, that the shinobi and the ninja use, which are trickery you know attacking from the shadows uh using certain gear that samurai would never use and tactics and strategies that samurai would never use and of course you know that's a internal conflict within him because how he was raised of course so that's the plot as i said now i want to jump into just jump right into some of the negatives of the game right and then i'm going to touch on like gameplay exploration uh you know the combat and the visuals and everything like that but it's a lot easier to just name all the negatives outright uh because there's a lot there's a lot more positive than negatives but there are some clear negatives number one the frame rate uh we learned that yes this game does not have a 60 frames mode it has a uh what what's called a performance mode or a quality mode most most times uh performance mode or frame rate mode is when games uh, run at 60 frames on consoles. Um, resolution mode, we know, is when they prioritize the resolution and it normally runs at a higher resolution. In Ghost of Tsushima's case, it's 1800p uh, when you prioritize uh, the, the, uh, the resolution. Um, and it's like below, it runs at below 30 frames at times. And the, the frame rate mode uh, it runs at 1080p and it's just more stable at 30. But either way, you're getting 30 frames. You honestly might as well play at uh, play at the resolution mode to make the game look better. Um, so that's that kind of sucks, right? And there, in, in a game like this, where making quick decisions and you need to see the fluid movements and and the animations and react very quickly uh playing at 30 frames is obviously not ideal they're playing at 30 frames is not ideal with most games but with some games it's more tolerable in this type of game uh where it's about quick and precise movements and reading the enemy's movements and seeing their their telegraph moves yes you're at a huge disadvantage so that sucks that the frame rate could not be higher um, sometimes there is a little bit of like 
wonky movement. I know there's gonna be a lot of uh, comparisons to Assassin's Creed with, uh, to Ghost of Tsushima, and you know, I do that myself. And one thing Assassin's Creed has had the time to do, because there's like 12 Assassin's Creed games by now, they've had the, you know, the chance uh, to like perfect their movement. And like with, I don't know about the recent Assassin's Creed games like Origin or Odyssey, but the other ones, you know, they were, they managed to perfect movement where you move seamlessly from one part of the environment, one obstacle to another. They, they had perfected the parkour at some point, right? The movement uh, in Ghosts, if you're like moving uh, from like a rooftop to another object, to another object, it's not as smooth, it's not as seamless, right? That could have been better. There are some technical issues like clipping. You'll see characters uh, or objects clipping into the environment. Clipping obviously means like they're uh, uh, falling into the environment, like your feet might be below the ground, uh, a character's hand might be, uh, you know, actually disappearing into a tree, something like that. So there's plenty of clipping in this game. It doesn't have the level of polish that we expect or we want from, you know, uh, Sony first party games. Um, so it could have used like maybe a few more months uh, just cleaning up a, a few bugs and a few glitches and, uh, you know, some, some quality things. But this game was in development for like six years. And my thing is I can understand why this game was in development for, for so long. When you play this game, the, how ambitious, the scope, the size of it, you can see like, yeah, I can see exactly why this game uh, was in development for six years, not only because of the world, but because of the depth in the combat and the gameplay. There's also some visual inconsistencies. Uh, I, just, I, I compared it to like what Final Fantasy VII Remake had an issue with. There's some, now, now the range a visual, a, a visual inconsistency isn't as bad as Final Fantasy VII Remake, I'll say that. There were parts of Final Fantasy VII Remake where parts of that game would look like maybe a PS2, PS3 game, and that's not an exaggeration. And then there's other parts of Final Fantasy VII Remake where it would look like the best game this entire gen, right? So it was very visually inconsistent. Ghost suffers from that, that's a similar issue, but not as drastic. There's certain parts where this game is just absolutely, most parts, it's most parts where this game is absolutely beautiful. It's a very aesthetically pleasing game, right? I wouldn't say it's it's like one of the best visually looking games. It's, it's aesthetically pleasing because of the environments, like the flowers, the way the colors pop, uh, the vistas, just the views that they give you. It's aesthetically pleasing, but certain things are not up to par when you compare them to uh, other games in like every department. But the but I would say the environment uh, in general is is what looks the best, but it lacks in in other areas. And the AI I would say is average to below average. This is something that most studios struggle with, and it ha and and it needs to get a a uh, it needs to be prioritized, right? Studios have to be better with uh, you know with improving their AI. They're not terrible. It ranges, but the difficulty, the consistency of the difficulty uh, is kind of makes up for the for the AI, right? And, and I think Ghost of Tsushima is just an indicator that it's time to get off of this generation um, because of, uh, you know, the frame rate, the frame rate issue and just the, you could tell like how ambitious they wanted to be with this game, but the current hardware is holding them back this game honestly is a, is a generation too early one generation too early if this was on ps5 or pc which i honestly does hope it comes to pc eventually um this and bloodborne because of those are two like uh sony first party games with the biggest frame rate issues uh, that would be wonderful if they came to ps5 and you know they had the visual improvements and everything like that so yeah those are the negatives Eight minute, nine minutes into the video, and I've only touched on negatives. Let me try to breeze through the positives, but there's plenty of them. First of all, the, the exploration in this game is great. I'm somebody who has open world. I get open world fatigue very, very easily, right? There's so many open world games, um, and you know, it could be very boring. Uh, you know, I've called for the industry to get back to making some linear games or at least linear open world, uh, linear open area games. I think those are typically better than just open world games. Bigger does not always mean better when it comes to, you know, these video games. But if you do it right, 
then it could be very enjoyable. The map is, uh, the map has three sections. Tsushima Island has three sections. Uh, the first part of the island is a there's a lot to do. Like I said, I'm 13 hours in. I've only done two main missions, and I've been exploring the rest of the island because they're full of activities. It's a very distracting open world. Like there's so much to do, and here's the thing, right? It's not very different from other open worlds games where they put a whole bunch of activities, and the the activities are not that ma that much different than 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 activities that they give you in other games that are that are boring. But they present these activities and these side missions in a different way that make it fun. It's the way they they present it, right? To make it not not get too monotonous, not get too tedious, and not get too boring. Um, and what really helps it is the traversal and the the environments and the lore and the world. Because, for example, to compare it to like Spider Man. Spider-Man had a lot of like side objectives that were very boring, very tedious, monotonous after a while. But the only thing that made that game tolerable to do those activities was your, was the, the traversal, the web swinging. If web swinging wasn't, well, and of course it, it would make no sense, there could be no Spider-Man game without web swinging, but if in a hypothetical world where there, there was no web swinging in Spider-Man, none of those activities would have been tolerable. You, could, you wouldn't be able to tolerate it, it, it would suck. So it's like that in Ghost of Tsushima where the traversal and going through these different beautiful environments and the random encounters and the lore and all that stuff, that's what makes it tolerable and that's what makes it fun. Because they present you in the world, they give you all this lore, this the, the Japanese legends, the myths, and it's presented with like graphic novels and all that stuff. Because there's like mythic gear. Uh, you can you can think of, think of it like powerful legendary weapons and armor you can get. And before they send you off on like this epic quest to find it, they give you some background, this like this lore, the, the, the story of the legend and the myth. It's given to you like by uh, an elder and it's presented with graphic novels, as I said. So that's much better than, for example, you know, a game just telling you, hey, there's some legendary loot over here. Go get it. Like, no, they, they present it and, and they add uh, story elements to it. So that makes it real fun to get. Um, there's a wind way marker, as we know. There's not just like a, a arrow pointing you where to go. That's good because it helps to keep the tone and the 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 theme of the game. Um, because you know uh, they they I believe the religion they practice is is uh, Shinto, which is the religion that believes in like uh, nature. They you know they worship nature and all and all that stuff. So wind guiding uh, the character fits the theme very well. As I said, there's plenty of like side quests and activities and random encounters, points of interest, uh, undiscovered locations, and, and they all vary. And it's all like very fun to do. Uh, there's camps where you can upgrade your gear, like your sword, bow, kunai, there's sticky bombs, uh, your armor and other weapons. There's bamboo cutting challenge, which increase your resolve. Your resolve is what you use to uh, use certain moves and to heal yourself. There's enemy camps, and if you kill the leader, the leader, uh, you get progress to learn new stances. There's four stances in the game. I'm not gonna, I don't know if anybody's gonna consider that spoiler, but I'm not gonna name all of them. And each stance uh, presents and gives you an advantage over certain enemy types, whether they're using spears or if they have shields or if they have swords. Right? You have to use the right stance. It's like a rock paper scissors type thing. You got to use the right stance with the right enemies. Um, and there's like there's hot springs and shrines uh, that you visit throughout the game and those give you different rewards there's fox dens which give you charm slots charm slots are buffs right um, they allow you to equip uh, charms which you once again find throughout the game um, and those buff your give your character uh, Jin different types of bu uh, stat buffs so yeah um, there's so much to do in the world and the, and the exploration is great uh, heading into the talking about the combat a little bit more. So the combat is very grounded, right? If you play Bushido Blade or Tenshu or one of these pretty grounded uh, samurai or you know ninja games, then you'll like this game, right? Most games we get in this genre are not like this. They're very flashy. They're very high octane, fast, uh, fast paced. Very unga bunga, as, as I describe it, right? Very hack and slash button masher. And some people might 
I think most people would be fine with this, but some people I think are too conditioned to every game being like that because that's most, mostly what we get in the industry, right? But this game is strategic. It's not about just spamming out a whole bunch of hits. You have to, you have to select your spots. You, you gotta be careful, you gotta be mindful of your movements. Uh, you have to choose your attacks very carefully, know your stance. Uh, this game does not have lock on, which can be very jarring and very uncomfortable for most people at first, even, you know, even for me it was, especially because most games we play like this, especially like Souls games, not comparing, you know, this games to Souls, because this doesn't remind me of a Souls games at all. Uh, but most games just in this genre, this third, third person combat genre has some type of like lock on and this game doesn't. So it's like a, an extra thing you have to manage um, is your is your camera which, like I said, was difficult at first, but kind of, I, I kind of got used to it and doesn't really bother me anymore. But the, the combat is, it feels real, fair, and grounded. And so does the difficulty. It does, there's not like this artificial difficulty in the game. It's only easy, normal, and hard, right? And I'm playing on hard, but people who, are play, who have played on normal have told me they're still dying with a certain amount of hits, right? Because they wanted it to feel grounded where you're not this, your character's not a sponge. He's human, so he's not gonna take you know ten hits and 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 be living. No, he he's gonna he's gonna die in like three or four hits. Now, of course, there's um, different ways to upgrade and improve your character to allow them to 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 take more hits. But even with those, he's not gonna take an absurd amount of hits that like break the immersion of the game. You know, it's it's not an RPG, even though it has like some RPG elements in it and everything like that. So I, I like the combat. I think the combat is very fun. I like that it's strategic. It's it's slower. Um, and like I said, it, it's just like a thinking thing. You can be very flashy. There's combos and there's movesets and everything like that. But you have to be smart when you do it. You can't just randomly be pressing buttons and everything like that. A lot of people are going to compare it to Sekiro. Uh, it's, it's, Sekiro was flashy, but you couldn't necessarily spam moves like that either. Uh, in, in that game either. You had to still break their guard and in this game you obviously have to break their guard. You have to sidestep, you have to roll. You gotta know, you know, you gotta pick your spots, right? And I, I, and I like that about the game. Going more into the depth and the layers, uh, th there's like, there's a really uh, deep skill tree. There's a skill tree for everything. There's a skill tree for exploration, uh, ghost, samurai, there's general combat abilities called evolving tactics. As I said, there, there's a skill tree for the um, for the combat stances. So and and then with within the the combat stances, as you unlock those, you get more move sets and more combos within within the stances. Um, so yeah, this game is just this game has a lot more depth than you than you know I thought it would have than most people realize. And when you uh, just take every weapon every move they give you and you start to combine it then the games like you know mechanics really start to shine uh because at first the combat can be especially starting out right because the i think starting out the difficulty uh curve is pretty high but then as you kind of adjust to the rhythm and you get the timing down of parries and everything like that because parrying is, is important blocking uh because there are unblockable mo uh, moves you gotta uh learn the timing of those when to dodge uh through the through the skill tree you can upgrade to be able to actually parry some of these moves by the way so that's very important um and that's one of the reasons why i decided to like explore the entire you know explore the map that was available and do all this other side stuff because then everything else that comes in the main story will overall be easier now this uh game was presented to us by sucker punch um as a very like ghost versus samurai uh play style in which you would go into a certain um encounter or scenario as the ghost or the samurai and you were kind of like that's what you were in that situation but that's not really what it's like pretty much the whole arsenal of what you unlock is available to you for you to use uh, in any encounter. It's not like if you go in stealthily uh, that you no longer have your samurai abilities or like it, that, that like 
abilities and, and that combat style is like cut off from you. No, you have all of it. So it's the it's the complete freedom in in any situation to go from stealth to direct combat. It's it's completely your will, you know, that's that's your prerogative how you want to play. So I just want to make that clear because yeah, some people might be confused that because it was like presented in, in that fashion. But it gives you complete freedom in however you want to play. The stealth is good. Uh, as I said, the movement sometimes uh, that it's not as seamless kind of makes the stealth feel clunky sometimes. Um, and like I said, I'm only 13 hours into the game. There's a lot more uh, like stealth and um, just uh, mechanics in general that I have not unlocked, I'm, I'm sure. So I can't speak to how good the stealth gets, but the basic foundations of stealth are there. You know, creeping up on enemies, um, attacking enemies from vertical places like aerial takedowns and aerial kills even you could even take down enemies like from from ladders and, ev and everything like that so the basic stealth elements are there the foundations of it are there how deep it gets uh you know i'm not sure of of course there's there's hiding in tall grass and all that stuff you would expect from like the basic of a of a of a game that has stealth so that's there but as i said i can't speak to um how how much deeper it gets and the last thing I'm gonna touch on is 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 once again the visuals. Like like I said, the the, the game is v is very aesthetically pleasing. The character models, like the enemies, are kind of like the textures are are not so great. Um, some things seem seem to be low res. Like water doesn't look that impressive in this game. Um, there's not always the attention to detail uh, that we've seen. Like let's be real, The Last of Us. Uh, part two has spoiled us, you know, with the with the attention to detail and everything like that. Um, but the main characters and the main like NPCs, uh, those look good. You, there's a whole bunch of different environments. There's the different weather. Uh, there's the different terrains and everything like that. So the game is, you know, as far as like mood and the and the music, all that is good. Uh, the Japanese voices, as most people have probably heard. Uh, the the lip sync is off because they recorded everything in English and then just put the you know the Japanese voices over it. I've pl I've played with both. I don't mind the Japanese voices even though the link sync the lip sync is a little bit off. That's it's still fine to me. It just reminds me of like how a lot of uh, old school Japanese movies, uh, how how we watched them back in the day. I guess uh, the, a lot of the times those the, the lip sync didn't match up then. So. Uh, it, I don't think it's, I personally don't think it's so bad to the point where you have to use the English voices, but both are good. Both are good, uh, even though lip, lip sync is a little bit off in the Japanese voices, like I said. So, yeah, uh, that's my impressions. Like I said, there was just so much to really touch on as far as this game. Uh, and I'm sure there's still some stuff that I probably uh, for, forgot to mention, but I'm enjoying the game. I'm, I'm really enjoying the game. I think the game is, is, is very fun. Um, I'm interested to see where the where the story goes um, in a world where open world games, you know, are tiring. Honestly, Ghost of Tsushima feels like a, a breath of fresh air, not because it's doing anything new, but it's how it's executing it. So, yeah, those are my impressions. Let me know what y'all think about it. And I'm just very impressed by it. I got to say. I'm very impressed by the side missions in this game because I think side missions, low key or high key, really make or break open world games. And I don't think that should be under, you know, understated or underappreciated. It's really not main missions. I, I would argue to say that side missions in open world games are arguably more important. And Ghost of Tsushima does the does the world right does the exploration right and does the side quest right so those are my impressions let me know what y'all think hit the like button uh follow me on twitter hit the notification bell so you can know anytime i upload a video or go live uh i'll be live streaming go Tsushima later and um yeah hit the join button so uh you could become a member on the channel all right i'm out of here peace